Before we proceed to the video, for more LEAD AP O plus M study material, you can contact me on my email and on my LinkedIn as usual. Hello and welcome to materials and resources credit category. The maximum number of points that can be earned is eight points. And this is the summary of what we will be going through. We've got two prerequisites and we've got five credits. Uh, the only thing that I would like to mention here is that you can divide this section. Uh, in fact, this credit category can be uh, divided into two sections. The first section is the incoming inside the building. That is whatever you are purchasing for the maintenance of the facility or the ongoing consumables or anything that you are purchasing for the building use is the first section that is incoming. The second section is the outgoing from the building, which is basically the waste. So for the first section, the incoming, you should find or try to purchase uh, the products that are environmentally friendly or those products that are certified by different uh, entities as environmentally friendly products and for the outgoing waste first of all it has to be minimized uh, by certain uh, uh, strategies and secondly if you are moving out uh, the waste from the building it might go to landfill which we have to avoid so the second uh, thing that we can consider is that it could move to a, any recycling facility any reuse is possible so minimizing the outgoing to the landfills and purchasing the best uh, the best product or the environmentally friendly product for the incoming so this is the basic division and then you've got the prerequisites and credits arranged in a certain manner so you have ongoing purchasing and waste policy for for the building and the purchasing for ongoing and purchasing of lamps is the purchasing part or incoming part for the first prerequisite and solid waste management ongoing is the outgoing part. Similarly, you've got another policy, which is facility maintenance and renovation. And we've got the two sections for it, which is purchasing for facility maintenance and renovation and the waste management for FMR. Now, there is a slight difference between maintenance and renovation. Usually it's not clearly defined that which maintenance goes back or can be classified as uh, renovation, but generally renovation is kind of small projects, little capital projects. and Renovation uh, or uh, sorry, the maintenance is usually the stuff that you do to maintain the building, which is regular and has to be repeated in certain intervals of time. So we will uh, go through the, pre the prerequisites and the credits and I put as usual this subsequent credits after the prerequisite. Prerequisite number one is ongoing purchasing and waste policy. So we know we have divided it into two sections. The first incoming and the second is outgoing. So ongoing purchasing is the incoming part and waste policy is the second section. The first is uh, the intent is to reduce the environmental harms from materials purchased, used and disposed of in the regular building operations. So the requirement is to have a policy that is environmental preferable and uh, it should include uh, the ongoing purchases like paper toner cartridges you could have uh, the staplers pens paper pencil pens rubber sharpeners whatever is the regular desk accessories toilet rolls tissue papers or if any cutlery you are purchasing for uh, the kitchen use the lamps are one of them and out of these the five most purchased products annually by cost are to be calculated because these were the uh, these are the products that would be used maximum as per the uh, purchasing cost and food would be uh, one of the elements or one of the things that are purchased too much uh, throughout the course of the year for schools and hospitality projects. So these are the ongoing purchases. Some pictorial examples of uh, the ongoing purchases including lamps, envelopes, the disposable cutlery, paper, paper toner and batteries, etc. The ongoing purchases also include durable goods. The one we saw in the previous slides were like fast moving goods or regularly consumable. However, the durable goods might have some warranty of five years, four years. So these are long term uh, when it comes to the usage. So it uh, can, uh, contains also the electrical powered equipment, your monitors, your phones and uh, the keyboards, all the printers, laptops, scanners and uh, all the other stuff which are usually the office equipment and 
appliances. Then comes the second part or the second section, the solid waste management policy. For that, we should have a storage location for the materials that are usually recyclable, like mixed paper, cardboard, metals, plastic, and glass. We know that usually uh, we have a setup in, uh, in the office or in the building or even at the houses where you put uh, these materials into different boxes. You segregate them before you hand over to uh, these facilities or when they come and collect there. Usually the, the bins are even color coded and then they take this material since it's already segregated, it's easy to reuse or recycle these materials. Now, both the policies, the waste management on ongoing purchasing should at least uh, cover uh, the purchases within the building and the area that is under site management control. For the prerequisite, the purchases from the tenants are not included. And uh, it is uh, also required that a waste stream audit should be conducted every five years for the ongoing consumables or achieve 75% ongoing waste diversion. Remember, this is not waste reduction. This is waste diversion to divert it from the landfills to other facilities for recycle and reuse. The documentation is environmental friendly purchasing policy. Now, what is environmentally friendly uh, or environmental friendly purchasing? Uh, usually the products that we purchase, they provide the information on their website or in their product catalog or, or on the uh, cardboard in which it comes as a packaging. On, on the packaging, they mention that the product is uh, made from sustainable materials or it is reusable or recyclable. So this is what uh, it means by environmental friendly purchasing policy. Uh, recycling waste storage area on the building plan. Usually the storage area should be accessible to all the waste storage and uh, uh, it should be uh, transferred to the facility that can recycle. Waste management policy and waste stream audit report, which is to be conducted to show it's done in every five years for ongoing consumables or uh, if waste diversion is uh, achieved as 75%. The ongoing purchasing and waste management policy is required for all the adaptations, but for retail, there are additional uh, options out of which we have to choose one in addition to the previous requirements. So why this is important? Because the incoming and outgoing flow is uh, much faster when it comes to retail. There is materials or products coming and they're uh, sold uh, to the customers and there's a lot of waste going on, which is much faster and much more than other adaptations. So there are multiple options to choose from. The first one is to have a supply chain survey. You have to hand over a survey to the supplier asking him, him about these five things. The first one is if what are their social equity practices, if they are taking any measures to reduce the carbon emissions in the atmosphere, or if they are uh, using any energy efficient measures, how they are selecting the materials. Usually when suppliers are using any sustainable materials, they put it on their website or it's shown on their packaging. If they are taking any measures to reduce uh, the waste or uh, divert the waste, and if they are uh, implementing any policy or any measures that uh, has less effect on human health. So all of the requirements documentation, which is general for all adaptations, plus the sample survey for supplies that is handed over to uh, different suppliers for collection of their information. Or you can select from the other three options. For option number two, whatever we have surveyed from our suppliers, we will try to inform and educate it to our employees and tenants about the environmental friendly strategies for supply chain, uh, what are the waste management uh, or reduction measures, how we can reduce the carbon emissions, and what is the best uh, criteria for material selection. And we can uh, transfer these resources in terms of uh, trainings, or you can give them some uh, literature. And for the documentation, all of the requirement documentation general, plus the education curriculum that you have provided and its description. Or you can go to option number three. Option number three, supply chain criteria list. To establish the criteria for all the retail products that are to be sold to the customers and to have an encouraging environmental friendly supply chain. Now, what is supply chain? From the raw materials to the consumer. So the purchasing of the materials, either they should be sustainable materials, the handling and packaging 
the materials in which uh, they are to be packed should be sustainable or uh, at least certified by a relative entity and the inventory should be less in order to have uh, less waste the material recovery during the manufacturing which happens to be pre-consumer recycled materials that if uh, considering uh, manufacturing of a door when you cut the door the extra slices of that wood chips can be reused uh, as uh, an input material and if there is a waste this is disposed in a friendly manner or the uh, environmental friendly manner means that it the maximum it is uh, tried that it does not end up in a landfill and product take, take back is when the product is used by the consumer usually the carpet manufacturers they give you an option that uh, even after certain uh, uh, years of usage you can uh, all the time have the facility or you can have an option to uh, send back these these materials to the manufacturer and they would recycle and reuse it in their factory uh, so the documentation is all of the requirement documentation for all the adaptations plus these criteria list option number four is sustainable purchasing education uh, it, it involves an educational display program through which you are educating the customers about the information that we have seen in option number three. You're educating your customers about your purchasing policies, your handling and packaging, how it is uh, if, with the sustainable materials, how you are maintaining your inventory, and how your material is being recovered during manufacturing, reducing the waste, and the waste that is generated is disposed of an environmentally friendly manner and you also offer take back so they, all this information is given to the customers uh, about uh, your sustainable practices the documentation is all of the requirement documentation uh, which we know is for all the adaptations plus the documentation of educational display what you are displaying and how you are displaying so the description of info presenting including all criteria so you have to display all this info uh, what info you are displaying and how you are displaying are to be submitted for documentation Credit number one is solid waste management ongoing for two points The intent is to reduce the waste generated by building and its occupants and the waste that is disposed of in the landfill that is to be reduced The requirement is to maintain a waste reduction and recycling program uh, and how you can do that by recycling, by composting, or by reusing the waste that is being generated. Now, we remember that as per the prerequisite, we have conducted a waste stream study. So we have the results from this waste stream, and we have to show that at least 50% of ongoing waste, we know there are two categories in uh, the ongoing purchases. There was uh, ongoing uh, purchases of materials, and there were durable goods. So the 50% of ongoing waste specified in prerequisite one uh, audit, waste stream audit, 50% should be reduced. Uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, or compost as per our program. And based on the same audit report, the durable goods are to be reduced, reused, or recycled by at least 75% of what is specified in prerequisite number one. And the batteries and uh, the mercury containing lamps are to be safely disposed of. Uh, the formula here shows that quantity of ongoing consumables uh, diverted by total times 100 will get the percentage and it has to follow 50 and 75 respectively for ongoing and durable goods. The documentation is the quantity of ongoing consumables uh, because based on which you will uh, apply the formula both produced and diverted, uh, diverted and the narrative describing the safe uh, disposal of batteries and how the mercury containing lamps are being disposed of well just like we had in retail some extra requirements for the prerequisite we have some exclusions in, the, in from which school should be excluded based on certain reasons now we know that we had conducted a waste stream audit for our project and if it is a school the food waste can be opted out the reason is the food waste would be more than other projects because the children may not be eating all the all of their lunches 
And uh, we know that from the waste stream audit report, we have to divert 50% or 75% of the waste. And diverting means we either we use recycle or compost. So if the food waste composting services are not available in the region, it would be really hard to attain this credit. So a school may exclude or it might not be economically feasible. Uh, but we have to show that in the documentation that it is not possible or the food waste can be taken out as well if you implement a, a, an awareness program to encourage the occupants which includes the employees and the students to reduce the food waste uh, and how it can be done there are three things that uh, or three strategies that you can opt to of one uh, uh, the first uh, strategy is for both employees and students the second is for employees only and third one is uh, for students only. So the first one is to put the signage in the areas, in the lunch areas or in the food and services areas that uh, uh, food waste should be reduced. It might be uh, just a monitor having a small ad. The employee training on food waste uh, reduction, uh, which is specifically for the employees and, and any extracurricular acti activity, which is best for the students because they learn a lot from the activities, uh, which would spread awareness of the environmental benefits you can gain from food waste reduction. So uh, one is for employees, one for school uh, school students, and one is for both. The documentation which we, would be all of the requirement documentation, plus if the composting food waste is not available or economically not feasible. And exemplary performance uh, can be earned one point by diverting 75% of ongoing and 100% of durable goods. Earlier it was 50 and 75. Credit is purchasing ongoing for one point. And we know that we are dealing with the first section, uh, which is the incoming part, the incoming materials inside the building or the facility. So the purpose is to reduce any environmental harms that uh, comes from these materials that are purchased or used in the operation and maintenance of the building or the facility. We know that it had two parts. The first was the ongoing consumable and the second one is durable goods. So the same pattern would follow for the credit. And the requirement is to purchase at least 60% by cost of the total consumables that are purchased in the project, which should meet at least one of the following. Now, all the criteria mentioned here, like post-consumer recycle, extended use, there are more to come. Uh, they are certified or uh, by certain entities which uh, certify them that they, uh, the post-consumer recycle materials are available in these products. So the first one is that if it meets or exceed US EPA, which is United States Environmental Protection Agency Comprehensive Procurement Guidelines, if it is uh, for extended use for rechargeable batteries or if uh, the toner for the la laser is uh, able to be remanufactured, sustainable agriculture, which is certified by food and beverage, uh, labeled by USDA, which is United States Department of Agriculture, organic or any food line certified or any other equivalent if it, the project is outside the US. All the paper and wood products would be certified by FSC, which is Forest Stewardship Council. And there are more to come in the next slide. This is a good example of how the product documentation can be submitted or what can be submitted as a compliant product for the criterion met. We know recycled content, local sourcing, extended use, these are all uh, one of the acceptable criteria for uh, the submission or the, for the purchasing of ongoing materials. Usually the manufacturer or supply documentation is enough if it is available or even the web page screenshot mentioning uh, the criterion met or if there is any invoice confirming the recycled content or extended use or bio-based materials. So uh, all of these th can be accepted as uh, compliant purchases and can be submitted as a documentation. Credit number three is purchasing of lamps for one point and perhaps due to the importance of amount of mercury brought to the building uh, with the lamps it is considered as an extra credit or else it would have been easily adjusted in the previous ongoing purchasing credit. We know that in the fluorescent lamps we have mercury. So the requirement is to implement a lighting or uh, lighting purchasing plan and it includes all the fixtures like uh, indoors, outdoors, uh, hardware fixtures or portable fixtures and it should comply with the formula. The overall building average of 70 picogram of mercury. 
uh, which is uh, what is picograms a small unit of grams lumen is uh, the unit of uh, luminous flux which is the amount of light emitted by a light source uh, total picograms per luminar by uh, total number of lamps per shade it should be uh, around 70 picogram of mercury that is acceptable uh, the best strategy could be that uh, you replace it by leds and uh, it can also replace the high pressure sodium lamps but any lamps uh, without mercury can be counted only if they match the same efficiency of a mercury containing lamps now the as uh, previous uh, credit uh, it also requires the purchases made by tenants all the credits in which uh, the purchases by tenants is required it's, it becomes a little bit hard because you have to follow with the tenants as well for the documentation the purchasing plan for the lamps the purchased lamps which verify that it is as per the plan and if you have used any mercury free lamps the verification about their efficiency and how the picograms per luminar is calculated if it is calculated by a purchase calculator that is to be submitted for documentation the exemplary performance can be earned for one point if uh, the mercury content is halved uh, from allowable which is 70 for uh, the credit and if it can be reduced to 35 picograms per luminar an additional point can be earned for exemplary performance prerequisite number two is facility maintenance and renovation policy uh, to reduce environmental harms from materials purchased now a little difference between the ongoing purchases the ongoing purchases that we have seen in the prerequisite the prerequisite number one was kind of consumables whereas here we are talking about the regular maintenance stuff like if you have to amend any hole if uh, there is any touch-ups required or the ch changing of filter this would fall under maintenance category category and not in the ongoing purchases and renovation is main so it could be maintenance or it could be a small project like if you want to change the plan of the floor this would qualify as renovation basically lee does not define uh, or does not draw any uh, line in between maintenance and renovation it would uh, be dependent on the project team uh, completely so we have uh, two things to consider uh, three things basically one is purchasing policy in this fm and renovation policy we have purchasing policy waste management policy and indoor air quality policy the first two policies are same uh, when compared to prerequisite number one we had incoming that was purchasing outgoing for the waste management uh, so the first is the for base building elements now what are base building elements the elements that are attached directly or uh, indirectly to the building like doors and windows we'll see it in the next slide there's a small photo and furniture and furnishes uh, furnishings including maintenance parts so uh, MEP system as in system is excluded but any maintenance part would be inclusive Waste management policy is to address safe storage and recycling and diversion of maintenance generated waste. The, uh, as per the example that I discussed earlier, that if you are changing any floor plan of your office or, or, or uh, any other area, in that case, if you are moving any wall, you are removing the door, um, uh, removing the windows. So all the waste generated in this process would qualify as the main, uh, maintenance or uh, renovation generated waste. We have to establish uh, waste diversion goals and uh, approximate waste anticipated and the strategies for diversion. Now there is a possibility, what is diversion? You reuse or recycle in case if you are moving uh, your floor pan and there was a door that was not in, uh, in uh, the new plan or it is shifted, then you do not throw that door away to the landfill but use the same door in the in other location as per the new requirements so this would be qualified as waste diversion goals because you are reusing any material available on site in your new maintenance or renovation this is the example of uh, the base building elements we've got windows we've got doors sometimes cabinets cabinets also qualify and the, and the other picture shows the furniture and furnishings that may be included in FM or facility maintenance and renovation purchasing policy. The third one is indoor air quality policy. In addition to the first two, purchasing and waste management, we have to follow procedures by SMACNA 
Smackna has sheet metal, air conditioning, contractors, national association, which deals mainly with the indoor air quality, how it can be preserved or how it can be improved. We have to protect, store and install absorptive materials. There was also a condition that if any HVAC materials are to be installed on site like ducting, they are to be covered before they are installed because uh, there is a high chance that the dust materials would be uh, would enter the duct before even they are installed. Uh, do not operate permanent installed AHUs. Why? Because if you are making any renovation works or any any uh, maintenance works, it has the capability or ability to capture the dirt and then it would be running throughout uh, the system. So it first of all, or the, the priority is that it should not be installed. And if it is uh, used uh, or there is no way that uh, you can avoid it, then the return should have MERV 8 uh, minimum efficiency reporting value of 8 filter has to be used uh, for the return. And this filter has to be changed before occupancy, which means that whatever uh, this filter has collected during the reno renovation and uh, the maintenance process, then it will be changed before the occupancy and these uh, particles would not uh, circulate in the air. Plan for flush out if necessary. Now, what is flush out? Flush out is <clears throat> when you try to change the building air, which might be polluted based on what we have done inside the building as renovation and uh, maintenance. So oh, we can change the air from the outside and the flush out is done by supplying 14,000 cubic feet of outdoor air per square feet of GFA. Uh, the following pictures show how flush out is done. You can see the ducts going from uh, outside and they are pulling the air from outside and delivering it inside, changing the air and there would be the other place where the ventilation happens. So we are basically changing the indoor air that is polluted by outdoor air. Uh, there is another possibility that if 14,000 cubic feet of outdoor air per square feet of GFA is not provided at once, we can provide 3.5 or 3,500 cubic feet of outdoor square feet of air prior to occupancy and continue during occupancy. So this will give us the, uh, the flexibility that people can be there working and we can do our changing of this outdoor air or purifying the air by uh, this flush out. Uh, the documentation for prerequisite is facility maintenance and renovation policies separate and uh, addressing the purchasing waste management and indoor air quality. The ground floor, uh, gross floor area has to be provided in order to validate the maximum amount of uh, flush out necessary. So following the same pattern for facility maintenance and renovation, we've got two sections, waste management and uh, the purchasing. So this credit is uh, about uh, the waste management for facility maintenance and renovation, which is to divert construction, renovation and demolition debris, which uh, might be generated from any uh, activity that was going on for renovation and maintenance. And the purpose is to divert it from the landfills and try to use maximum uh, by recovering or recycling the materials. The requirement is to divert 70% of waste generated. So if we have a certain percentage that is to be shown, it means that we should know the total waste generated and we should show how much waste is diverted from the landfill. So waste diverted by total waste times 100 as per the formula will give us the diverted waste and it should be 70%. Furniture and MEP are to be excluded. The documentation would, would be solid waste management plan during performance period. So we had a plan before for the prerequisite and it should also be followed during the performance period. Total waste should be known in order to calculate the waste diverted and description of exclusion of hazard, ha hazardous materials, if any. Uh, some materials uh, like uh, asbestos or others, if available on site, are to be excluded from both the calculations from the total waste and also from the waste diverted. An exemplary performance of uh, one point can be earned if you are able to show that you have diverted 95% of waste 
from facility maintenance and renovation activity credit number five is purchasing for facility maintenance and renovation the first half or the incoming for fmr to reduce the environmental harm from the materials that are used in building renovation or facility maintenance we've got multiple options the first one is to purchase at least 50 percent by cost of the total materials that meets one of the following we have seen in the purchasing ongoing the first credit that there are certification bodies that certify any material or product to have recycled content fsc for wood products uh, some other entity to certify bio-based materials materials uh, reuse we've got some extras here like green screen 1.2 screen benchmark c2c which is cradle to cradle certified acp is alternative uh, compliance path reach optimization supply chain optimization i have reserved one slide uh, one slide completely for explanation of these terminologies but for now for the option number one the material 50% uh, by cost should be uh, meeting at least one of these following it could be supply chain optimization wood products biobase or the others and if the product that you are using is extracted manufactured and purchased within the 100 mile radius as per the picture that we can see here the product or material will be valued at 200% so if you have purchased $100 it would uh, in compliance path it would be counted as 200 because it is uh, purchased and uh, manufactured locally for the documentation the total cost of materials and products because from which we will take the compliant materials and the list of uh, products that are compliant including their name name what is the environmental criterion either it follows in the it falls in the wood products bio base materials reuse recycled content supply chain whatever you are applying uh, what was the cost what was the date of purchase because it should fall in the performance period quantity and weight average based on calculations and manufacturer or third party declarations if it is wood product uh, it is to be certified by fsc usually the screenshot uh, from the website or the material safety data sheet from the product can be uh, enough to fulfill the requirement of documentation option number two is furniture for one point in which 75 percent by cost of total furniture during the performance period for facility maintenance and renovation meets one or more of exactly the criteria in the option number one recycled content wood products and you have third party certified uh, certifications or there are certifying bodies that certify the products or materials to uh, have this environmental or sustainability criteria the documentation is total cost of furniture and furnishings and verifying the purchase meet criteria or third party declarations or the simplest option is option number three you did not make any renovation or you did not purchase uh, any furniture so uh, just make no alteration to the project space and do not buy any furniture during one year performance period no documentation is necessary you just need to mention that nothing has been altered on the site since cost valuation is involved in option number one and two but not all environmental or sustainability criteria are valued equally so extended user responsibility uh, like uh, recycling or take back programs that are valued at 50 percent by cost and not 100 but by base materials uh, which are coming from living organisms like fiber and cotton are valued by 100 percent wood products only if they are certified by fsc or forest stewardship council any reused or reclaimed would be valued at 100 percent only if they are previously used for two years minimum and recycled content has uh, two parts one is pre-consumer recycled and post-consumer recycled and post-consumer is valued at 100 percent and pre-consumer at 50 percent uh, just to give you another example of pre and post-consumer if you uh, buy a tire use it and then it is recycled this is post-consumer recycled because you have consumed the product but if uh, on the facility any extra rubber that is being reused in the facility again that would be qualified as pre-consumer recycle uh, content so if your product has pre-consumer recycle content it will be valued at 50 percent by cost 
The green screen list translator and reach optimization or alternative compliance path reach optimization test the material or product against the chemical hazard and then grade them uh, in case of green screen as uh, gold, platinum or silver and uh, they are valued accordingly. C2C is cradle to cradle means the product uh, extraction, the product uh, manufacturing, the product packaging, the product consumer, and then the recycling facility if available. So C2C completely there, verify and check and then grant the product a certain certification based on which we will uh, evaluate our uh, cost factor. Uh, supply chain uh, optimization is when the manufacturer documents 99% of the total material ingredients out of which the product is uh, comprised of and verify by third party that identifies, communicate and document information on all the safety and environmental hazards or whatever the characteristics of the ingredients are and optimize the health and safety and the environmental impacts. The low emission VOC is uh, volatile organic compounds. Uh, must be inherently uh, non-emitting like stone it is in, inherently non-emitting material or if it is uh, an in, uh, emitting material it should be tested and compliant with the standard of low emission VOCs. So with this we come to the end of materials and resources and we will continue with our next environmental quality. Thank you very much for your attention.